Justin Miller, Oxnard College Physics here. Oh, this is all in my way. That's okay. We're going to look at it really quick before we do a problem. And yeah, it's going to be good stuff. So you may say, what is this? Well, this is a nice little optical bench with some uh, little object illuminated arrow box and a nice little lens here. So here's a lens. i to take it off here. You can look through it. I don't know what you see through it, but I see things upside down. That's great. Can put this on here so we can adjust the location of it. Here's another another lens. That's a nice converging lens. Again, things appear upside down unless it starts getting really close to the object that you're viewing, and all of a sudden it's uh, like a magnifying glass. Anyways, that's just another one of these. A little bit bigger, but this one's nice. So, what is this? This is just a little object arrow box. You may hopefully be able to see, but. There's a little arrow here pointing up. There's a little cross with a little like a circle on one side of the cross so that you can tell like orientation of things. If things are flipped or upside down relative to the object and the image that's produced. So this is a nice little illuminated object we'll say. And what we want to do is look at the image that's produced by passing the light from this object through a lens, a converging lens in this case, and see specifically what's going on. So I'm going to take this, no magic, no tricks. I'm just going to take it, set it back on this optical bench. Let me see if we get this aligned up decently here. Tighten this up. And what I want to do is see, based upon where this is and where the screen is, which is going to be this. I know it's kind of tilted at an angle, but we can still get an image on here. Where does the lens have to be? So. The distance from the object to the lens is the object distance, P, and the distance from the lens to where the image is produced on a screen or just in general is the image distance, Q. So right now, it's going to be a lot easier if I start turning off the lights, but let me see if I can do it. Yeah, I can see it. You probably can't, but I'm going to turn off the lights. So I've positioned this object at a certain distance away from this lens such that it produces an image on the screen of the object. So let me squeeze past here. Ooh, I'm disrupting too much. Yeah, it's still there. I'll turn off the lights here and we'll see what we can see. So that's a light. That's a light. Let's go off all the way. Maybe you see that. Let me squeeze past here because I got one more light. And Ready, and I'm going to actually move this down so I don't knock it over and unplug the little light source. Great. These little jack stands. I'll move out of the way, and then I'll go ahead and say, All right, you ready? Here's the problem. All right, so we've got ourselves a converging lens with a focal length of 30 centimeters. So F is equal to, is it positive or negative? It's a converging lens, so it has to be positive, plus 30 centimeters. And then we are going to place that lens at a distance of 50 centimeters from the object and say, where's the image produced? So we have that P is going to be equal to 50 centimeters, oops, 50 centimeters for part A, anyways, A. And we want to know what is Q, what is the magnification, what is the orientation, and image type. The common things that we want to know. Okay. Where is it? What's its magnification, orientation, image type? So we go ahead and go with this. It also asks us to produce a ray diagram. So we're going to actually do the ray diagram first and then we'll see if our map kind of matches the ray diagram here. So I'm going to freehand this just because it gets a little time consuming to try to get on a bunch of rulers and stuff. But we start with our nice principal axis, right? And for the lens, I can just go ahead and put a straight line. Here's our lens right there. 
And then we say that our focal length is 30 centimeters. So I try to scale that out. 10, 20, 30. So we have a focal point here. And 10, 20, 30, and a focal point here. The lens has two focal points equidistant from the lens on either side. And then we're going 40, 50. So our object is going to be about right here. There's our object. And that's going to be OK. I'm going to make this lens a little bit bigger, whoosh, longer, that is. So we can make sure everything interacts with this lens here. And just make that longer, too. All right. So first off, we want to utilize the three primary rays in producing the ray diagram. First ray, what does it do? Parallel to the principal axis and then refract such it's aligned with or goes through a focal point. So this particular ray number one goes like this, parallel to the principal axis, gets to the lens and refracts, changes its direction. So this is a converging lens, right? Converging lens means that it's going to take parallel light rays and force them through the focal point on the back side of the lens. So this ray has to go like this. There it goes, bent towards the principal axis in converging lens. Second ray, second ray goes through the intersection point of the lens and the principal axis and continues on undeviated in its path. So this one's a little bit harder to dry out, but we'll still do it here. Something like that, not the straightest line, but we get the gist here. So this is ray number two. And then we have ourselves ray number three. It goes through the other focal point, goes through or is aligned with the other focal point, and then refracts parallel to the principal axis. So that one's going to go through this focal point, and then refract parallel to the principal axis. And what happens? Oh my gosh, those three rays all intersect at one location. And that location is where we say the image is produced. That would be the tip, translates back to the principal axis, and there is our image. What do we know? Well, we can already see that the absolute value of the magnification is going to be greater than when the image is far bigger than the object laterally. The orientation, inverted. What type of image is this? Is it real or is it virtual? And all that we got to look at is, hey, do the light rays physically intersect on the back side, or do we have to trace them back to a point where it seems like they intersect? And the answer is, hey, they physically intersect here. These are the real light rays intersecting right there, then diverging from that point, it acts like the source itself. Light comes out from the source, light comes out from the image. So it is real. So. Then it's a matter of mathing this out and seeing if everything else sort of makes sense regarding the image distance and the magnification. So then we go ahead and do this, right? We want to know what Q is. Well, if we've got that 1 over F is equal to 1 over P plus 1 over Q, we want to solve this out for Q. Q is equal to the quantity of 1 over F minus 1 over P to the negative 1. There we go. Let's move that over the other side, invert it all, and then we can solve this out. We know the focal length is 30 centimeters, the image distance is 50 centimeters, and we've got ourselves 1 divided by 30 minus 1 divided by 50 to the negative 1. 75. 75 centimeters. Well, let's, let's just look at this. This is supposedly 30 centimeters, right? 30. This would be 60 here. Does that look like about half of that distance? It does to me. That looks pretty clean in terms of about 75 drawn out. And again, this is by hand drawn out. Um, so if there's 30, there's 30, and there's another 15. Hey, that's 75 centimeters. It's positive, which means it's on the back side of the lens. Perfect. That also means that it's a real image, and there we go. In terms of the magnification, the magnification is equal to negative Q over P. 
Well, Q is equal to 75, so we go negative 75 centimeters. Centimeters all cancel out. Divided by the object distance, which was a 50. What do we get there? 1.5? Yeah, 1.5. That's a little bit bigger than 1.5. That's okay. We got negative 1.5. 1.5 times the height of this. Well, if this is this high, 1.5 would be about like this, right? One and a half times it. This is a little bit bigger than that. Actually, it's quite a bit bigger. But again, I freehanded this. So you should be able to see that this one shouldn't bend down as much, nor should this one. That's my tendency to bend everything down for some reason. Something pulls my pin down. But eh, it probably intersect more up, up here. Um, if we drew it out a little bit cleaner with rulers and such. But nonetheless, we get something within reason. And eh, we're good with that. So these check out, check, check. And we're good to move on. Move on to part B. Part B. All that's changed with part B is that now we're going to take the object distance to be 10 centimeters. So 20. Let's, let's do. Let's do 10. 10 centimeters. So. I'm going to again do this thing again here. I can take the same lens whew, like this. I can translate one, two, three focal point. One, two, three focal point. 30 centimeters on either side. And then we're going to put the lens, excuse me, the object right here. There is our object. All right. So we'll take this to be our object. I'm going to put the O down there. I want to produce the ray diagram. So what do we do with this? Well, this one's a little bit harder to freehand out, but I'm still going to just do it. First ray starts out, goes parallel to the principal axis, and then refracts such as it's aligned with or goes through a focal point. So in this particular case, goes through the principal axis or goes parallel to the principal axis. Which focal point does it correlate with now? And so it's the same lens, it's the same lens, it's a converging lens. Converging lenses take light and bend them towards, take parallel light rays and bend it towards principal axis. Okay, not the cleanest line. Whoops, that's okay. That's, that's a little messy actually. So let me try to do something here with an actual ruler because tracing these back gets ugly really quick without some assistance. So let me just take some assistance here and do it. So there, that's a little sharper there. And there's our first ray, second ray. Hey, the second ray goes through the intersection point unchanged in its path. So that ray is just going to go uh, like this. Those two are diverging from one another. They're not going to intersect over here, right? So that should already give us the clue that, hey, we're going to have to be tracing lines back, and this is going to end up producing a virtual image. But let's just do this last one. The last one utilizes the other focal point. Is aligned with or goes through? Well, light can't go through this focal point and interact with the lens. So this one's an alignment. So that alignment is like this. The ray that comes from the uh, consideration here is like this, and then it goes parallel to the principal axis. So there's our three rays, all diverging from one another. So what do we do? We go ahead and trace them back to where they would intersect on the back side. 
and that is where the image is produced. So I'm going to do this all with green doesn't come out that great. Let's just do it all with black. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to trace this one back. Go this one traces back. along that path. This one, now it's, again, it's the refracted rays that you trace back, so I don't want to trace this back or this back, it's tracing back the refracted paths. So here's the refracted path for this first ray, and it traces back like this. And what are those two? Hey, they intersect right there. Hopefully the third one intersects there too, or at least close. And we get that that's parallel right there, and within reason, what do they do? They all intersect right here. Which would be where our image is. So our image is actually behind our object on the front side. That's interesting, right? Well, what can we do with that? Well, we can go ahead and map this out to see if that all makes sense. What we should notice, that this would have to be, magnification is positive, it's upright, same orientation as the object. And is this a real or virtual object? Excuse me, real or virtual image? Uh, we have to have that this is virtual, right? If we don't have the physical intersection of light rays, we're only going to have a, a real image on the back side of the lens. This is on the front side, it has to be virtual. We traced light rays back. So it's virtual. So then going ahead and mapping this out here, we've got ourselves. Just like before, Q is equal to the quantity of 1 over F minus 1 over P to the negative 1. F is 30 centimeters, P is 10 centimeters in this case. And we step in, and we've got, just take that and just change that to 10. Negative 15. Negative 15 centimeters. So that negative says it's on the front side, and it's 15 centimeters. Well, this was 10 right here, and then we add on another half of that. That seems reasonable, that being 5. Maybe not exact, but it's close, right? It's close. So that seems to check out pretty quick. And then in terms of the magnification, again, negative Q over P. In this case, it's negative Q. Well, Q is negative 15, and then we've got P is equal to 10. So the negative signs cancel out. We got 15 divided by 10, which we get positive 1.5. Now it's a little bit more reasonable in this one because I used rollers. But hey, there's one plus another half, 1.5. Positive because it's upright. And there we go. It all correlates pretty good with the ray diagram. So that also goes to show you, use a ruler. Ray diagrams come out a lot nicer than freehanding them, but when you have long lengths like that, um, using a ruler is sometimes more trouble than it's worth to do on the board quickly. Anyways, that's a nice little problem, and yeah, we'll come back and we'll look at another problem involving a convex lens. But that's to stay tuned for. All right, take care.